Salutations, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. And this video is about um, Mr. Ben Shapiro's recent interview um, when he was questioned by Andrew Neil on the BBC. So, uh, Mr. Shapiro, Mr. Fact, don't care about your feelings. He was irritable, touchy, volatile, confrontational. Um, and it was uh, faintly amusing to see all this coming from a man who's constantly calling for civility uh, in politics. So who was the interviewer? Well, Andrew Neil, Mr. Shapiro, boasted he'd never even heard of this person, which only shows Shapiro's ignorance. Um, Rupert Murdoch, not Rupert Murdoch, sorry. Andrew Neil's had his own show on the BBC for over 20 years. Now, I know that uh, Mr. Shapiro is not uh, British, but the BBC is a major channel around the world. Um, Andrew Neil, he was editor of The Times back in the early 80s, became editor of The Times at the age of 35. Okay, so the Times um, was the biggest newspaper in the United Kingdom. So it's a very major publication. If you're going outside the United States, what's probably the, well, the, the biggest English language newspaper in the world? Yeah, it was the Times. It's declined since though. So um, he's not a nobody. And um, Mr. Shapiro was constantly accusing Andrew Neil of um, uh, far left bias. In fact, um, Andrew Neil, was, when he was in charge of the Times, it editorialized in charge of Thatcherism. Yes, that woman who was the doyen of conservatism, the soulmate of uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. So um, Mr. Shapiro, Shapiro, sorry, he revealed his staggering ignorance there. And who appointed um, Andrew Neil to these positions? It was Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch, the Australian-American media mogul, a guy who owns News International, perhaps the biggest um, news conglomerate on the planet. Okay, the guy who owns Fox News. Uh, and yet we're being told that uh, Andrew Neil can be dismissed because he must be a leftist. I actually don't know what Andrew Neil's personal politics are. And in the early in the early 80s, he advocated for conservatism. Since then, I don't really know what uh, he believes in, but he's um, taken aim at all sides. Um, so some people who are commenting on this video were wondering what his accent is. Uh, all right, Andrew Neil, he comes from Glasgow. who has got a mild Scots accent. That's that. He started out writing for the Glasgow Herald newspaper. So Mr. Neil, he comported himself with dignity. He was plastered throughout and he was playing devil's advocate as uh, any journalist worth his sort would do in this case. So uh, he gave um, Mr. Shapiro um, this uh, laudatory introduction and you could see that Mr. Shapiro was uh, very much enjoying having his ego caressed. And then Mr. Neil asked a worthwhile question. <clears throat> Banning abortion, is that taking us back to the dark ages? Um, and he said, um, in Georgia, a woman who miscarries can face a 30-year prison sentence. 30 years for a miscarriage, which is a natural event, which is not deliberate. Now, Mr. Shapiro did not say that was a bogus accusation. Instead, he became very combative. He counterattacked. He cast aspersions on the objectivity and integrity of his interviewer. Um, because that claim that if a woman miscarries, she'll face a 30-year prison sentence, it didn't seem credible to me. But uh, astonishingly, Mr. Shapiro didn't say it was wrong. Is that, is that confirmatory silence? Seemed to be affirmative to me. Um, if he didn't say no, that's, that's, that's bogus. Um, so here he was being offered a chance to advocate for the pro-life position. And instead of doing that, he simply starts um, uh, slagging off his uh, interlocutor. So he felt that the wording was confrontational, saying it's taking us back to the dark ages. So Shapiro could obviously turn it around and say, no, aborting babies is the dark ages. Um, so he didn't like that it wasn't presented in a manner which was favourable to him. It was a very worthwhile question. This is a highly tendentious issue. Mr Shapiro likes talking about this one an awful lot. Therefore, yeah, you should challenge him. Um, so Mr Shapiro, he didn't even engage with the issue. And uh, it, why is he not defending his position? Does he think it's indefensible? Then, then he came out with straw man arguments against uh, Andrew Neil um, and, and said that Andrew Neil had accused Mr Shapiro's side in politics of being ignorant. Now, Mr Neil never used the word ignorant or any synonym thereof. He did say back to the dark ages. Um, so it's, it's uh, astonishing that uh, Mr Shapiro would not defend his public statements when a lot of quotations from his work were read out to him. So why does he find it so shameful what he, he said earlier? So um, Mr. Shapiro started doing the interviewing. Well, actually, he was there to be interviewed, not the other way around. So it's Mr. Shapiro's place to answer questions, not to ask them. So he doesn't seem to appear, he doesn't appear to know how an interview works.
We want to hear about Mr. Shapiro's views, not Mr. Neal's. And um, Mr. Neal challenged Benjamin Shapiro on um, his jaw-dropping claim that uh, most Jewish people are not Jews because they voted for Obama in the United States. So, um, I mean, I thought it was a religion, but obviously it's a, it's a political uh, movement, according to Mr. Shapiro, saying that they have to care about Israel. Well, you know, not, not all Jewish people are Israelis, and some of them aren't Zionists, some of them are even anti-Zionists, and many Zionists are not Jewish. So it's this ridiculous conflation of Jewish with Israeli with Zionist. It's just the kind of thing that actually anti-Semites do. So there he is playing into their hands. And Mr. Shapiro claiming that uh, President Obama would not allow Israel to defend itself. Well, actually, Mr. Obama's job was defending the United States, not Israel or any other country. He um, didn't prevent Israel defending herself. He simply said the Israelis should please not kill quite so many civilians. And I remember when that came out, Mr. Shapiro was apoplectic that Obama should have any concern for the lives of Palestinians. Um, was Iran deprived of the means of self-defense? Well, they claim they're not developing nuclear weapons, but uh, I mean, why wouldn't they? And Mr. Shapiro is very eager that the Iranians don't get the same means of defense that the Israelis have. You can see the United States, Iran, Israel, Saudi Arabia, all itching to attack Iran, this unholy alliance. And uh, Mr. Shapiro is a bit of an advocate for that. Anyway, um, so Mr. Neal put it to his guest that he had course in public discourse. Tellingly, Mr. Shapiro did not dispute this accusation. I remember how um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shapiro accused Obama of being Jew-hating, Jew-hating for not supporting a very tendentious policy uh, by the Israeli government, which led to a very large number of, of, um, of Palestinian civilian deaths. You go back to the very the first month of Obama's presidency, and um, hundreds, it's certainly in the hundreds, possibly in the thousands of Palestinians, were killed by the um, Israeli military. Um, but it's due hating to suggest that uh, the Israeli army should not kill huge numbers of civilians. Um, you see, that is coarsening public discourse uh, on Mr. Shapiro's part. That is um, broadcasting these outright fallacies, uh, making bogus accusations of anti-Semitism um, and actually stoking real anti-Semitism. And it's nauseating that he should do this when he especially he used to work for Breitbart, which had some anti-Semites in it. I know, anti I know Breitbart sometimes advocated for Israel, too. Your characterization is part of the problem, Mr. Shapiro said to Mr. Neal. Shapiro is often um, taking aim at, at crybabies, those who are whining. Well, what was he doing himself? It's so much ad hominem. He was bereft of any substantive argument. So anyway, it was about US public discourse, not about the BBC's discourse. So you see how Mr. Shapiro is hyper-aggressive. He's always Manichaean, always pre present things in moral terms but he doesn't like the other side doing likewise. So it's very self-laudatory when it comes to the United States or people of his faith, and he is vigorously partisan. And listen, this is what Mr. Shapiro said, not coarsening public discourse, of course, here. Um, the Palestinian Arab population is rotten to the core. The problem runs deeper than a few figureheads. They are as responsible for their government's evil as Germans were for the Nazis. Mm. Well, full of common decency, that quotation. There he is, disseminating uh, racial animosity. Imagine if people had said that about Jewish people. It would be a vile thing to say. And indeed, anti-Semites do publish such um, nauseating tropes. Um, and as for Germans and the Nazi party, well, only 43% of Germans in a vaguely fair election voted for the Nazis. Obviously, the real figure would be a bit lower than that, lower than that, because the Nazis cheated quite extensively. And when that, that was, election was held in 1932, People had no idea how bad the Nazis were going to become. And uh, what, what did the Nazis actually do? Well, they um, uh, wouldn't let any German woman have an abortion. They, um, they were hyper-nationalistic. They were militarists. They went in for land grabbing. They um, were disliked. They, they, they disseminated hatred towards ethnic and religious minorities. Um, what else did they do? They were very pro the religious authorities there. They were into corporate welfare. These are um, all positions with which Mr. Shapiro agrees. Now, obviously being fair to him, he doesn't advocate for genocide. Um, he does advocate for ethnic cleansing, though, towards Palestinians and even Arab Israelis. Christian Israelis and Muslim Israelis, he wants them booted out. So um, I, I'm not saying that Mr. Shapiro is, is a Nazi. He's probably about a quarter of the way there. So imagine if somebody had come out with these um, uh, vicious tropes against Jewish people. Mr. Shapiro would be incensed, and so would I.
Uh, no ethnic or religious group should be subjected to such uh, barbs. So if Israelis kill civilians in self-defense, but if the Palestinians, if they kill an Israeli soldier who's illegally occupying their country, it's not self-defense? Wow, how, how is he such a moral gymnast to come up with this one? Okay, listen to another foul racist tweet. Arabs want to swim in sewage and blow things up. Right. So remember when the Israeli government, they blew up Palestinian civilians in huge numbers and indeed a United Nations school. Read the Goldstone report. All right. Goldstone is a South African judge who is Jewish and a Zionist himself. But he had the immense moral courage to act without fear of favor and tell the plain truth about all this. And that is, is, is a very common racist trope, saying that the other side are unhygienic. It reminds me of um, The Eternal Jew, that Nazi uh, racist film, and showing Jews, then rats, and rats, and Jews, and Jews, and rats. And it was a foul slur, suggesting people are verminous, and, and that's what he's saying. He doesn't actually use the word rodent, but um, there we are. And apparently there's the strongest emotional reaction against people, um, the racist reaction, is actually not fear, it's, it's disgust to suggest that they are repugnant. And obviously Mr. Shapiro's um, verbiage is repugnant. Palestinian swimming in sewage. Is that not racist? I can't think what is. And if they do have problems with their sewage system, I wonder why that might be. Is it because Israel controls uh, the sewage system for them and regularly blows things up and Palestinian is, is, is kept very poor by Israel, which controls almost all ports of entry and is deliberately keeping the uh, population just above starvation level? So, um, Mr. Shapiro accused the BBC of not being sufficiently condemnatory of Hamas. Well, the BBC is not a um, political organization. Um, it's not there to condemn or to eulogize any organization, so no. Anyway, Mr. Shapiro pointed out they elected Hamas, which is quite true. And Hamas has called for the uh, annihilation of Israel, which is of course detestable. I don't want Israel to be, to, to, be, to be annihilated. And there's a lot which is praiseworthy about Israel. One of the freest countries in the Middle East. So. However much I, I flagellate Israel, I've got to say they do care more about human rights than almost any other country in the region. Um, so uh, he accused Mr. Neil of shouting slogans. Mr. Neil, he kept his counsel, he was tranquil throughout, he didn't shout or raise his voice remotely. He was cool and courteous the whole time. You want to make a quick buck? Mr. Shapiro accused him of that. Well, hmm, uh, Mr. Shapiro is always advocating for hypercapitalism. The profit motive is sacred, according to him. He's a, he's a devotee of mammon. And what would be wrong with making a quick buck? Mr. Shapiro has made millions out of these uh, um, anti-Ishmaelite tropes and so on, out of castigating Muslims in general, out of chauvinism and all the rest of it. So um, it's, it's a very rich coming from him, talking about people trying to get rich. Um, no one has ever heard of you, said uh, Mr. Shapiro. Well, now that, there he is really revealing his stupidity one of the best known journalists in the United Kingdom and no one has ever heard of him. So uh, yeah, Mr. Shafira, he monetizes his opining and, and he is very well known, but there he was being so conceited as though, as though Mr. Neil's questions weren't worthwhile just because Mr. Shapiro was too ignorant and hadn't done his homework. So he come, came across as very stuck up. So, so people are not well known their questions must be worthless, but if they are well known, then the questions must be worthwhile. Obama is well known. Are his questions always worthwhile? So Shapiro, he is better known, partly comes because he comes from a country with five times the population of the UK. So he starts with a big advantage there. So really it is baseless populism, demagoguery. If I can make a splash, if I can uh, use inflammatory language, that'll be eye-catching, I'll be well known, ergo I'm right. So he has to hail every video of his as um, wiping out his disputants. And that's why on his channel is often saying destroys, capital letters, how he destroys them. Um, so doesn't sound very much like a mature debate to me. So uh, it was hilarious to hear that Mr. Shapiro's latest tome um, claims there's far too much ire and uh, impoliteness in the public square. Well, if the public forum is too heated, Mr. Shapiro is one of those who's really found the flames. There he was, snippy, touchy, furious at times, He's a rather cantankerous type. So Mr. Shapiro suggested that the US media is all monolithic liberal left. I didn't hear him substantiate that. No doubt there are some liberal left journalists and there's some shows like The Young Turks or David Packman which openly say, yeah, we are a liberal and or a left wing program. That's true. There's a Fox News which is very much on the other side. There was Alex Jones, 
until uh, uh, his racist greeds and his uh, mass production of fake news became too much even for the likes of Mr. Shapiro. But um, apart from that, I mean, things like MSNBC, CNN, NBC, I'm not aware of any liberal left bias. They certainly bring on guests from all, all um, points of view and give them the same treatment, it seems to me. It could be there's a liberal left bias. I don't perceive it myself, but it's certainly not monolithic. Um, so does he not face such worthwhile questions in the United States? I would, thought, would have thought that he does. I remember he said that he left Breitbart because Corey Lewandowski allegedly hurt a woman's arm. Well, that was noble of him to take such a stand on principle. Um, but it was shocking to hear Mr. Shapiro claim that he could be the arbiter of who's Jewish, as in only if you voted for the Republican Party, which didn't exist a long time ago. And so nobody was Jewish until they come along, I suppose. So Jewish people don't have to care about Israel, but of course most do. And many Israelis don't agree with um, trying to have a war against Iran. I think it'd be counterproductive. So much of what you do seems to turn its back on Judeo-Christian culture. So said Mr. Neal to, um, to Mr. Shapiro. And Mr. Shapiro had no response to that as such, simply saying, you lecture me on Judeo-Christian culture when you call opponents of uh, abortion going back to the Dark Ages? Well, Mr. Shapiro had a chance to, to show how it was wrong, but no, he was simply um, attacking Mr. Neal's character. Uh, Mr. Neal is not there to say Judeo-Christian culture is a good thing or a bad thing or whatever. So you failed to answer a single question of mine, uh, said Mr. Shapiro. Yeah, um, well, he actually answered, uh, answered a few. But anyway, um, Mr. Neal is not there to answer questions. He's asking them. That's what an interviewer does. My goodness. He said that these questions were badly motivated, the, uh, the questions that Mr. Shapiro didn't like. Well, they weren't because what they were doing, they were probing the guest. And that's why Mr. Shapiro was very shirty. He didn't like these questions and he became um, very testy. So uh, it was hilarious to see him lose the, lose the cool and uh, terminate the interview. Well, uh, I think it was um, a victory for placidly dismantling um, someone and Mr. Shabira was, was needled and did not come across well in that one at all.